Oh crap, no, no, no. Hi guys, this is Fanna, and thank you so much for watching. So, this is old, but I created a doll um, based off of Toyo um, O.C. Oliver. Uh, this was a birthday present for her. I use a Alistair Wonderland doll from the Ever After High line. And her character, Oliver, is, I think he's eight years old. So I definitely aged him up because Alistair's body type is not a child. Um, it's a little bit more masculine, like a lot more masculine. But I took the um, face factory paint off with some pure acetone or nail polish remover. And then I am now removing his hair so that I'm able to make a wig. After cutting off as much as I can, I then rip his head off. Um, you really should put this in some water, um, run some hot water over it so that you um, don't damage the net peg. I'm impatient and did not do that. And then we have this lovely headless body that can just sit to the side for a while. I do end up trying to drown him for a little bit to loosen up the glue on the inside of the head because scraping the hair and the glue from the inside of the scalp is a very time consuming and I am uh, not a fan of the process so putting it in some hot water helps loosen all that up and make my life just a tiny bit easier. I, um, actually, this is the first male doll that I have ever made. I'll talk a little bit about, um, the difficulties with the styling process a little bit later, but right now I was using a screwdriver to scrape the inside of the head. The scraping the inside's the easy part. Getting all that crap from it is the hard one. And it just is, ugh, it's disgusting and it's gross. But what I end up doing with the hair is I cut some yarn pieces and I end up combing it out. I don't um, recommend using a comb like this. What makes it a lot easier is actually like a wire like pet brush, which I end up getting for future dolls. But you get nice little fuzzy wefts like this. Normally I would iron them out with a straightener and make wefts, but this time I decided to just glue them completely on the head. And then um, I didn't show a lot of this process because as you can see in a second, uh, he wasn't very stable and I couldn't really get him a lot. <laughs> Yeah, so that happened, but um, instead of making a wig cap, I just glued it directly to his head, and then he has this fluffy, lovely hair, which I end up masking off with um, a white cloth so that I could do the face without damaging the hair at all. I, um, again, have never done a male doll before, so I had a little bit of difficulty figuring out what the heck I was doing. I end up drawing out his... Um, eyes with light brown and add some shading and contour to his nose and such, drawing on his eyebrows, his cheekbones, just kind of like making his face a little bit more defined than it is. I think I want to buy some new pastels because the ones that I have are kind of chalky and I'm not the biggest fan of how they look, maybe get some more colors. Or such. I added on some blush and then make his eyebrows a little bit donk darker. They end up being um, a brown instead of the blonde like his hair is supposed to be, but that's okay. A lot of times people's eyebrows are significantly darker than their actual hair color. I use a white brush, not a brush, this is a pencil. I um, am using white watercolor pencil and um, to do the whites of the eyes and kind of add some highlights to under the eyebrows and defining the lips and such. Again, I also want to look into buying some more um, watercolor pencils 
because I'm just, I'm, I'm not a fan of the quality of what I have. What I have is, um, it's, it does its job, but I do not have a lot of, I think it's like a 24 pack. I don't have a lot of colors and I'm just, I'm not quite happy with how it looks. I end up, um, drawing on the pupils and irises, just trying to, still trying to sketch out what I'm doing. Um, brightening up the face with some white, with some highlights, and in between each um, layer of where I think that I've done something that I like and want to keep, I spray it with um, a layer of Mr. Super Clear in order to seal in that layer and kind of save my progress. Unfortunately, once you save your progress, you cannot um, remove what you've done unless you use acetone again, which just can completely destroy everything that you've done. So just just be careful and pretend that you know what you're doing. Um, he has Oliver has beautiful blue eyes, so I tried my best to try and um, make sure that I carried that across the board, highlighting the eyebrows once again, and. I just, I, I contemplated whether or not I wanted to blush the body. I ended up deciding not to do that because as you can see later on, his body is completely covered by all his clothes, but again, that will come a little bit later. I darkened the outside of the eyes with a black slash dark blue, just to define the eyes a little bit more. I use pastels to darken the eyes and make the, um, the pupils and such and he's he's getting there um something that i i i like this doll's face a lot until i got to the white highlights of the eyes they ended up it gave him like this derpy almost expression which i'm not i like the big round white highlights are good for the girls because their eyes are generally bigger and this and that but for the guy it just it just didn't look right I ended up redoing it several times and I thought I was happy with it but then looking in pictures later on I was like ooh, maybe not the best choice I think for future reference what I'm gonna do with the um the whites of the eyes not the whites of the eyes the highlights of the eyes I'll do like very like a streak like little streaky parts but his face is all done I sealed him again and added some gloss to his eyes and his um, lips and then I styled his hair cut it and his hair was too white for what I wanted so I ended up adding some pastels into his hair to darken it some yellows and browns and such and just brushed it in there he ends up looking um, pretty straw, 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 is that a word? Probably not. <laughs> but it ended up working really well. I added a signature to his thigh, which is my first time doing that on a doll. But, you know, I feel like if I'm going to send this to someone, I should sign it so they know what's going on. Oliver has an adorable little scarf, so I found the smallest crochet needle that I could, and um, I had some. I actually had like yarn that fit the color of the scarf perfectly, so I just use um, this green yarn to make a scarf for him, which was the first time that I've crocheted in a long time. It's kind of funny that the first thing I crochet in years is a little doll scarf. I think I ended up making two of them because one was too thick and wouldn't wrap around the doll properly. But after I do a couple rows, after I do a couple rows, I switch off to white because um, his scarf has just like little white strips here and there, but it is mostly green. Um, and then when I was done that, I tied in the edges of the scarf. And his scarf is um, removable, as is as are the rest of his clothes. But again, I'll go back to that a little bit later. I it made this like project made me want to uh, crochet a lot more. I used to do a bunch of the um, like stuffed animals, like where they called them, um, emigrimi. I think I'm probably completely watching that. I used to do that a lot. Um, I, 
for every Christmas, I would make my dad a little um, crocheted like animal that he liked. Like I made him a Yoda, or I made him Toothless from uh, Imagine Dragons one year. But it's just fun. I miss it a little bit. I ended up taking Alistair's loafers, and um, they were like this ugly green color, so I painted them to match Oliver's. So I got some dark blue paint and did several layers of the blue onto the, um, the shoe to make it a little bit darker. I should have painted the inside of the shoe, but at the time I decided that it was kind of pointless because like his foot was going to be in it and why would I, but then like I spent such a such, I, I spent so much time like actually trying to make it pretty that like the green inside was kind of a like, ugh. But it's kind of funny like, like it's it's just like this little tiny shoe. I end up um, doing like a little bit darker of a blue to put um, on because it just wasn't quite the color that I wanted. I did some black details like the sole of the shoe and the bottom of the shoe um, and later on there are some white details to highlight because a lot of times in these molds there's a lot of detail that the um, the factory paint just or there is no factory paint they just don't they spent all this time on a mold of the shoe to make it incredibly detailed and then there's nothing to highlight all the details in the shoe. So I added like some stitching and some dots and like there's like little lace, they're, they're almost like moccasins loafer type things. So here I am doing that white detail. I was holding my breath the entire time. I was so scared that I was going to mess it up. This gorgeous little blue shoe that I had done. And I probably should have, like, something to hold the shoe other than my fingers. Like, as you could tell, like, it was just stuck on top of my thumb as I was going along. But, you know, you do what works best. I actually think I had it on, um, like, little clothespins. And they, like, my roommate or my friends or whoever would walk into my room would just see, like, the progress and the process of these dolls and they're always like what the heck is going on i was like it's just it's just like you you're coming at a really bad time uh just like come come back later when it's done and i'm not crazy and you can see like everything all together because they see like the beheaded doll or the doll without the um the face on it or they see like these little tiny shoes that are just like on clothespins drying I, um, yeah, it's a, it's a fun process. I took his clothes and, um, modified them to make, um, a t-shirt and some pants and a jacket. And I made a little, um, a little mug out of paper. I'll link how I did that in the description below. But here's all the pattern pieces I ended up making, kind of, sort of, based on what, um, his clothes were already I just heavily modified them and this is the first doll outfit that I made that was completely removable I, I that doesn't seem like that big of a deal but to me it is um a lot of times I would have to just sew on all the clothes because it just was not working out properly but the um the shirt has velcro and the jacket and the um the jacket and the pants both have snaps on them which is again I, it, it's exciting for me and if Toki ever wanted to like commission uh, another outfit for Oliver she would 100% be able to do that I kind of wish I had added buttons to his jacket instead of painting on the buttons but I didn't have little white ones when I was making this and it just it just didn't work out quite the way I wanted I did a little monogram O on his shirt too which was kind of dumb and I kind of wish that I didn't do that either but you never know I didn't know what was underneath his jacket um because there's a school outfit and then there was like a casual outfit so I wasn't quite sure what was happening 
I also didn't have a video for this for some stupid reason, but here he is. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. I hope you have a phenomenal day and keep being extraordinary. Bye!